Are you interested in finding artifacts for yourself but you're not sure where to start? Well, stay tuned. In our video today, we're going to show you how to hunt down to the river, up in the fields, and in the creeks. So keep watching. on the river today we're gonna show you guys how to sift and surface hunt down here but before we get started I want to talk to you guys about the ethics of being on the river in the creeks and in the fields um, before you guys even start hunting you need to look up and know your laws so you know whether or not to, you're following the law there's a lot of places that are like federal lands that are protected or state wildlife areas like here in west virginia you can't hunt in state wildlife areas for arrowheads um, there's national forest areas i'm pretty sure you're not allowed to look in those um, we have wayne forest just up the river if i ever do go look in that area i cross over to the places i'm allowed to look in west virginia and that's where i hunt for artifacts i always respect the law and more importantly respect the landowners when you're on private land um, i have a rule for the most part i don't do virtually any kind of digging other than sifting right at the water line. Um, you know, that's for ethical reasons. I've talked with guys that uh, know a lot more about digging than I do, and they've convinced me to refrain from digging unless I have somebody that knows how to do it professionally. So uh, there's all kinds of different guidelines and laws and ethics. and the laws are going to be different everywhere you go based on where you're at. You might not be here in the Ohio Valley like I am. Um, you know, and you might value things different too. You might have caves and things like that on your property and you're completely comfortable digging and nobody can stop you. Uh, anything I can do is urge you in those instances to seek the advice of somebody that knows what they're doing so that way you don't uh, hurt any artifacts. A lot of times people dig and they destroy things. so. Um, just a general disclaimer to follow all the rules and ethics. Don't go breaking the rules out here and giving arrowhead hunters a bad name. That's the last thing I want you guys to do if any of my videos have inspired you to go hunting. So, uh, yeah, that's the most important. So, follow all your laws, and then once you know where you can and can't hunt, then that's when you start asking permission and get you a couple places to hunt. And once you do that, then the hunt begins. So we're gonna get down here and we're gonna show you guys where and how to look for things and dig and find stuff, so stay tuned. All right, the cool thing about being down at the river is once you have permission to hunt a spot, you can pretty much just dig anywhere. Now the chances you're gonna find anything by just randomly digging are kind of slim, but I've done it before. But you really need to learn how to identify where these old campsites were. And that's one of the first things I'm going to show you how to do. So we're going to come down through here and we're going to find a spot that resembles a good place to dig. And then I'm going to show you why it's a good place to dig. And we're going to see if we can find anything. Now if you notice, there's lots of rock in here. But the big rocks are the indicators that you're in a good spot. There are big round rocks when you get near what would be an old campsite or an old settlement. And what those are, are fire rocks. The natives would bring those out of the hills. And back in the day when this river wasn't so wide, you know, kind of like in here where I'm at now, right at the beach, would have been land and they would have been camping. See right there's an example of what possibly could be a fire rock. That's about a fist sized rock right there. So who knows, that could be an old campsite that's fallen out of the hill. And that might be a good place to dig. We're gonna wait, we're gonna come down here and try to find a place that has more rock. And then we'll put a couple sifts up out of the sand there. 
All right, we're starting to find some big rocks right in here. Once you find a place that has rocks like this, this is a pretty good spot to dig. So we're gonna get the sifter out and we're actually going to try to do a couple sifts in here and see if we find anything. All right, so we're gonna sift right here. Now, all I really use to sift is a shovel and I have a bread basket like you can see at the store and I put some quarter inch hardware cloth in it and that holds all the artifacts and lets all the sand if I can get it off all the sand and dirt out so these are our tools and we're going to get digging it's important to get your sift out in the water first and when you dig, you want to try to dig where there's sand and you don't want to get too much mud. That mud will stay in there and stay caked in the sifter. So a lot of places I do, because I get right to the edge of the water, and I just take the top off. Right here, it's kind of rocky. There's not much sand. So we'll just be getting the rock top off. And I'll go down through here a little bit and get some. See if we can pull anything up. All right, so now we got our sifter full. There you go. And what we'll do is we'll drag it out in the water and we raise it up and down and get as much sand and mud out as you can. Now the mud's a little bit harder. You'll have to pick most of it out. But doing this, you'll get all the sand out. And once you get all that out, then you can start picking through your sifter and see if you have any artifacts. So it's as simple as that. All right, well, we didn't find anything in this first sift, but don't get discouraged because that's gonna be common. Um, I've got a case full of finds now. It's been about a year since my first find. And for the first few months, I found nothing. But um, you slowly learn the identifiers of a good site. And we actually have a few of them right here. These are pieces of fire popped rock. You can see all that jagged part there, and then you can see the smooth outer cortex of the rock right there. And there's another one. These popped rocks are a good sign because the natives would lay other stones or even some of these stones in a fire and it would heat treat stuff. And a lot of times they would lay uh, flint and other things on top of these rocks to get them hot, but kind of indirectly so they didn't get them too hot and these rocks popping in the fire because the moisture that's inside them is a byproduct that's left over from these sites so if you see this kind of stuff but you don't find artifacts don't get discouraged because that spot's probably got something in it keep looking and there's a good chance you'll eventually find something so even though we didn't find artifacts today we're actually on the right trail and we're going to talk a little bit more about the signs here in a minute. So. so we showed you what fire popped rock looks like and, you know, big stones and those kinds of things that they use to make fire pits. And that's one of the best ways to identify a spot on the river. Um, another thing is when you're walking, just surface hunting, just look the beach. And if you start finding shards of flint, that is a spot where artifacts were being manufactured. And if you're finding all kinds of flint on the ground, that's the easiest stuff to pop up. So I would recommend when you start seeing that to dig right there. Some of the best artifacts that I found have been in spots where there wasn't always fire pit rock, but if I saw flint, then you know that there's gonna be bigger flint artifacts in there. Um, they always had stuff left behind, you know, wherever they were manufacturing these ancient artifacts. So uh, the flint, popped fire rock, 
Um, you even sometimes uncover old ashes and things like that. There was a uh, fire pit that I discovered one day coming out of the hillside and it was completely intact. There was ash, it was actually falling out on the ground and it's kind of unmistakable too. But uh, yeah, those are just some of the things. Once you start training your eye to identify that flint and identify those fire popped rocks, you'll get really good at being able to zero in on spots that are gonna yield results for you. So just learn to train your eye. Um, one piece of advice I give people, some people disagree with me, others have told me it's helped them find stuff and it helped me. Flint kind of gives an appearance of broken glass, really opaque broken glass whenever you find the flint shards laying around. When uh, people flint nap or just any kind of percussion that breaks the flint in half, that result is kind of a more rounded break, kind of like you see when you break a piece of glass on the edge. And I started training my eyes to just pick up any piece of glass because I, I personally thought they looked similar. And in doing that, I started finding more and more flint. And then I kind of learned how to differentiate the two once I got used enough to the, what the flint looked like. And you know, that helped me a lot. So, you know, that might be a helpful piece of advice for y'all. It certainly helped me. And I've had people that I've given advice to tell me that it's helped them. So uh, yeah, kind of try to train your eye to look for broken glass when you're down at the river. But those are the two main things. Um, I've showed you the tools, yeah, the sifter and the shovel. You could bring a walking stick down too. You know, in one of my last videos, I showed you my new walking stick and you could just use that and surface hunt. Just hunt with your eyes and use the walking stick to turn rocks over. I know plenty of guys that never dig, never sift at the river and they come down and they find stuff all the time. So Okay, so we showed you guys how to dig down at the river. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to head up to a field and I'm going to talk a little bit about how and where to look in the fields. Um, I don't have as much luck personally in the fields, but um, I can get you started and I'm actually going to steer you towards some YouTubers that actually know their stuff when it comes to looking in the fields. So we'll head up there and we'll get a look at it. All right, I come out of local mountain bike trail system here. I wanted to show you a good field. This one's not tilled. I don't hunt this one. I don't have permission to be in this field. I just wanted to get a good picture of it since we were close by. But um, hey, fields are a little bit more simple. You got tilled field, you got untilled field. And as long as you got permission, you can look. I mean, surface hunting's the name of the game in fields. You can dig, but I don't know of any uh, skills or identifiers to find a good place to dig. Um, but I don't field hunt a lot too, so there might be folks out there that know a little bit more. But um, basically, looking for artifacts in a field is usually just as simple as get permission from the owner and then just walk the rows and you'll see the flint sticking out just like you do down at the beach. It kind of has the same look to it and sticks out different from the rest of the rocks um this is where i defer to people that um actually know how to field hunt a little bit better because like i said i just don't do it a lot i've only got a couple fields i can look in but there's a great youtube page that i watch all the time um it's a family and their page is called artifact addiction so if you're interested in some good field hunting check those folks out but uh yeah that's um that's not a venue i venture into very often we're trying to find permission from people but you'd be surprised it's a lot harder to get people to say yes than you think um some tips people gave me if you're out there asking permission to hunt other people's fields um introduce yourself be polite to people of course give them your contact info let them know who you are familiarize yourself with them and don't use words like hunt because a lot of people, you know, they're game hunters. And that kind of word, when you're asking to be on somebody else's property, kind of has a negative connotation. Because a lot of people actually rifle and bow hunt their properties. When you use hunt with the word artifact, even though you're not really doing the same thing, uh, I feel like it kind of has that connotation in people's minds and that makes them more inclined to say no. So, um, 
replace the word hunt maybe with like the word searching or looking. I think those are more benign terms that uh, help you get the yes from the landowner. So other than that, that's the most I can give you in terms of tips for field hunting. It's pretty simple. But uh, we're gonna go down to the creek next. Me and Bub's looking in a creek here in the culvert. You can see where all this is washed in. That's a good place to look in a creek. The streams when they overflow will make these big sand bars. Bub actually found him something in here, some type of, looks like a piece of flint. But you can see where the stream comes and kind of etches that way and it does when the water's hot, it pushes water in here. And uh, somebody left their trash. But in here's a little sandbar and this is what we're looking at. That's what he found this ends right here. So. You can sift and you can surface hunt in the creeks. It goes on down through there. It's just an example. We'll show you a couple more examples of some better sandbars and bigger streams here in just a minute. Now, if you look here, this is a good example. We're on a smaller river. This is a great example of a sandbar to look in. Fine, bub. Oh, it's kind of a smoothed out rock. You can see this changes all the time. Next year, or next flood even, this might not be here, or it might be back underwater enough, and it, sandbar might be over there next time. It changes all the time, so this is a good place to look for artifacts. We're down here at the river, sun's getting ready to go down, and we just got done with a pretty good airhead hunt. We found a few things, but uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for watching this video. Um, it's pretty important that you do learn how to do this and do it right in terms of etiquette and following the law, so it really does mean a lot that if you guys are going to go out there and try to do this as well, that you watch this video and maybe educated yourself hopefully learned something it's really not rocket science just ask for permission when you're in private places and make sure you're following the law but uh maybe one of these days we'll see you out on the river i appreciate everybody watching and y'all have a good evening <music>